Why hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video and more specifically welcome to my first ever video here on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And more specifically in this one I'm going to be checking out as well as showcasing how you can use as well as me using the Fate Weapons Vault here in Modern Warfare 3 during the beta. And also in this video I am going to be talking about what are Weapons Vaults, how they are going to be working and why you might want to get them. So with that all being said guys if you want to enjoy this video at any given point in time make sure you leave a like on it down below as well as be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. So with Without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so the first thing that I am going to be talking about in this video is the Fate Weapons Vault and kind of explaining what a Weapons Vault is and how it works. So basically, we saw Weapons Vaults back in Modern Warfare 2. There's pretty much only one of them, which was the FJX Cinder's Weapons Vault, which interestingly enough, you also got access to during the Modern Warfare 2 beta. And then over here in the Modern Warfare 3 beta, we have a very similar thing with the Fate Weapons Vault. Now, basically, the simplest way of describing a Weapons Vault, and that is it's basically a super blueprint. So I'll get to that a little bit later in more depth but the first thing that I want to explain and that is what weapons families are because it is very important when we're talking about weapons faults. So basically a weapons family we saw this back in Modern Warfare 2 and we see it here in Modern Warfare 3 are a series of weapons that kind of operate off of the same platform. So I'm just going to use an example of the AK-47. It's a classic weapon we saw in many different games and think about it, you have the AK-47 assault rifle but then you also have other things like the AK-74 use of machine gun or the RPD or the RPK light machine gun or the Dragon off sniper rifle. All of these weapons are in different weapon categories, however, they are all going to be using the base AK-47 weapons platform. And that's basically what a weapons family is. We have a very similar thing with like the M4A1, where you have the M4A1 assault rifle, which is fully automatic. Then you have something like the M16 tactical rifle or the M14 marksman rifle. All of those weapons are sharing a common weapons family. So now you might be wondering, what is the relevance to weapons families and how do they work with the Cinder Weapons Vault? So basically, the Cinder Weapons Vault is going to be a series of blueprints. So I'm just going to start off by using this assault rifle as an example, the SVA 545, because this is one of the first assault rifles that you unlock in the game, and it's actually an assault rifle that the Fate Weapons Vault is actually on. So if we take this assault rifle as an example, we have the base version of the weapon, but you have the Crimson Fate, and then you also have the Carbon Fate, which are two separate blueprints. Now, these aren't the only blueprints that you're going to get, because again, it's a weapons vault. So you're going to get the blueprints for this weapon, of course. But if we head on over to the submachine guns, you're also going to be getting the blueprints on the AMR-9, where if we go over to the Armory, we have the Crimson Fate, and then we also have the Carbon Fate once again. Now, if we head on over to the Shotguns, we have the Riveter, which is still in the same weapons family. And if we go over to the Armory, we have the Crimson Fate, and we also have the Carbon Fate. And that's not it, because if we head on over to the Sniper Rifles, we have the Longbow over here, or once again, we have the base version of the weapon, the Crimson Fate, and then the Carbon Fate. So simply put, you're not just going to get one blueprint, you're going to get that style of blueprint for every weapon in its family. You're basically sharing the wealth. Now that's not the only thing. So one thing that is really important about the weapons vault and that is every single attachment for those weapons in that family is going to be automatically unlocked for you. So just using this as an example, you can see for the SVA 545, I've been using it a little bit, but I'm only at level five out of 30. I still have another 25 levels to go. But if I go over to the weapon progression, you can see every single attachment over here for the weapon I already have unlocked. And that's because I have the weapons vault blueprints. Now I should also mention Mention, and that is, again, you're only going to be unlocking the attachments that are in that particular weapon family. So if let's say I use the base version of the weapon over here, head on over to the gunsmith, you can see these attachments, which are the default attachments for the weapon in the weapon family are unlocked. But I don't have every single attachment unlocked because as you can see, like the Colossus Suppressor, I have to level up my MTZ 556 up to level 25 to unlock it, which again, that weapon is in a different weapons family. So you're not going to be unlocking every single attachment in the game, but you're going to unlock the attachments that are in that weapon family. And all right, so that seems pretty cool. I think at this point, you could probably understand what a weapon vault is and what a weapon family is. However, you might now be wondering, how exactly do I get access to these weapons? Now, what you have to do is you have to pre-order the vault edition of Modern Warfare 3. So the vault edition is going to be coming with a couple other benefits. For example, you're going to get the game itself. You're going to get actually uh, the season one battle pass with 50 additional tier skips. You're going to be getting the fate weapons vault. You're also going to be getting a couple other other character skins and I think some COD points if I'm not mistaken. So it's basically the deluxe version of Modern Warfare 3. And then once you pre-order that, you are going to be getting access to these blueprints. Now there is another thing that's actually pretty cool about these blueprints over here. And also just for reference, I would assume for probably the most of this video, I'm going to be using the SVA 545. That's just because it's a pretty good assault rifle and I personally like using assault rifles the most. No offense to the sniper rifles, I know they're pretty cool, but going back to it, you get two blueprints of course. Now this goes back to the theme of Modern Warfare 3 where you have kind 
have like the good guys versus the bad guys theme. So you have the Crimson Fate over here, which has basically the diamond camo on it, and its theme is going to be red. But then you also have the Carbon Fate, where you have the exact same look. However, everything's blue, of course. Now, there are two other things that are pretty cool about these particular blueprints. So the first thing they have to keep in mind, and that is unlike just a traditional blueprint, you actually have a skin for every single attachment in that weapon's family. So as I'm sure most of you guys are aware, if you ever had a blueprint back in like Modern Warfare 2019 or Black Ops Cold War or Vanguard, you have the blueprint, it would have the attachments on it. However, if you were to change any of the attachments, the entire look of the gun is going to change. And that was something that was kind of weird as how they did blueprints back in those games. However, weapons vaults actually don't have that issue. So I have the Carbon Fate over here and I'm over in the Gunsmith and I'm just going to use this as an example. If we head on over to the barrels, you can see if I change the barrel, it's going to slightly change the look of the weapon. Now, what's pretty interesting is I'm just going to use this one right here as an example. Actually, no, we'll go with this one. It's a little bit longer. That's going to change the look of the weapon. But if I go over to skins, I go over to Carbon Fate, you can see the barrel that I'm going to get is going to be themed around that particular weapon. And that's the case for every single attachment in that weapon's family. So again, if we use the suppressor, we can put on the Carbon Fate one and it goes entirely with the look of the weapon. So yeah, that's another major benefit for it. Also, one thing that you can do is if we go over to the barrel, you can also put on the opposite one if you want to kind of mix and match, which depending on how creative you are, you can feel free to do so. Oh, and also one final thing. Did I mention that both of these blueprints are actually reactive camos? So when you load up into the game, it's not going to look like this with a diamond camo. It's actually going to look like a more plain version of the weapon. However, every additional kill that you get, you're going to see it's going to be covered more and more with diamonds. So with that being said, I am going to be jumping into a couple games so I can actually showcase it and try it out in game. And yeah, without further ado, let's dive right into that. And all right, as you guys can see, of course, we are going to be joining up into our first game. And this time we are going to be playing on the classic map Favela. Of course, playing a little bit of hard point. All right, there we go. And you can see that we already got a little bit more diamond on this weapon. And we got a little more. And the spawns are already flipped, so we got to be careful of that. Oh, well, that was a spawn point and a half. But yeah, overall, I think it is pretty interesting because we're only in the beta and we already have a reactive blueprint. Technically, a couple different reactive blueprints. All right, there we go. Got the headshot too. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I mean, one thing that you can say is that for the Modern Warfare 3 beta, I mean, every single map that's in the beta is a remake map from either Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, like the original Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. So at least there's not much of a learning curve when it comes to these maps. I mean, that's of course assuming that you played the original Modern Warfare 2 and 3, which it's kind of crazy to think about that there are some people that are going to be playing this game that weren't even alive when those games came out. But anyway, I digress my old thoughts. So as you can see, we're just going to hold off for a second. You can see that the diamonds are starting to show up on the weapon. Is oh, that was close. Got another one. So that's going to effectively wrap up today's video. I hope you went on to enjoy it. And if you did, don't forget to leave the like on it down below, as well as be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. So that way you guys will not miss any of the latest and greatest Call of Duty news, class setups, intel, and so much more. So thank you once again for watching. I'm your host, Deeper Jungle. As always, I hope to see you in the next one.